How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, we had a, a rare release of the single I beat your ass. We started joking about all the different reasons why we would do that. He started writing the hook, he jumped in the booth, hit the hook. I started writing the verse, and we laid it down, and, I, and we stopped for a second, just listen to it, I'm like, this is a hit. It's like an international ass with an animal. It reminded me of like, turn the club up, throw them balls, look that tray. Something that's just so catchy and, um, you know, and magnetic that you can't just avoid it and have it work in your mind. So uh, we did that. And I started hearing people on the track. I'm like, I can hear an old school Ludacris on the track. I can hear like a Wiz Khalifa. And uh, I reached out to Ludacris first. I said, hey, man, I got this track, man. This mug is going to go bananas. And um, I shot it to him. And then I shot it to Wiz. And Wiz said, I'm on it. He said, I, I, I'll give you the track tomorrow. So he would write in the studio, send me the verse the next day. And at that point, you know, it has some validity behind it, so we just start going ham with it. So T. Woodley, uh, I'll beat your ass at the track. Obviously, you know, MMA champion, but you got a love for hip hop. Love you know, what, 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 what prompted all this for you, man? You know, when you think, you know, I already, you know, surrounded myself by a lot of different people. I really don't hang with a lot of MMA guys. So when you see me, you might see me with football players, basketball players, actors, recording artists. And just anybody I can vibe with. When you look at someone that's doing something on the highest level, it doesn't matter what it is, they have one thing in common. They've been chasing greatness and they was persistent. So you could go and immediately click. So I started hanging out with Ludacris, you know, just really down earth guy, savage dude. So we became cool, me and Wiz became cool, me and Snoop became cool. And I started realizing that for MMA, that was a demographic that nobody had. They didn't have the Floyd Mayweather thing. And I had been trying so hard to bring those fans and the audience base over to MMA because really, when you see MMA, they see MMA as a whole bunch of white guys beating each other up with a sprinkle of brothers here and there. But it's actually a true martial art. When you break up boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, taekwondo, um, jiu-jitsu, anything that you break up individually, you respect it. But when we merge the arts together, sometimes we got the rapper being barbaric or just bar fighting or whatever. So I wanted to just try to educate you know, not only just the community, but it's an affordable thing that kids can do. So I pitched to the UFC, and I'm like, man, so now I increased my network, so now the base and the draw became more. And I said, you know what? Rap is a culture. I'm from Ferguson. That's my street that the ride happened on. I've been to the bottom of the bottom. I've experienced some good moments as well. Anything that you can rap about, there's nothing you can rap about I can't relate to. So I went in the booth and we started doing this rap song. Just kidding around at first, freestyle, a couple beats, back to back. They said, you know you can rap, step out the booth. It was like, we need to do something serious. At this point, I'm just been, I'm stress relief. So they do a cypher, and it's a funny story. I didn't know this dude right now. Yeah, I might know. I didn't know T-Double. Okay. I was off the grid. All right. And I went in to do a cypher. My idea of a cypher was dudes in a rap and, you know, they having fun. It might be off the top of the head or whatever. So I said, cool, I'm down with it. You know, I always, I told myself in 2018, I'm going to stretch myself. Stand-up comedy, music, whatever you want to think about. I was taking myself out the box. So I went in there with that intent. He was in the booth. One take, did the verse, did the stab, did the lip, came out, was done. And they said, you ready, Tyra? And I said, give me 10 minutes. I'm not finna go in there after that man just tortured his, um, his boot and go in there just, you know, rattling some stuff off. So I wrote something in 10 minutes. I went there and recorded it, and it was like, you just wrote that in 10 minutes? It's like, we, need, we definitely need to do a project. So it started with that. We started doing some tracks. Um, the first couple tracks I didn't really feel. Like, those might not ever hit wax. Um, but I started finding my rhythm. I started finding my vibe. And I started finding, like, my niche. And, and hip hop, and me and Dub start collabing on songs, and then the beat your ass thing came forward, and then we had a real concept. It's real. So, you know, when we go behind the beat, we like to make sure, in terms of really understanding the individual. You got real St. Louis roots. You mentioned you from Ferguson, yeah. obviously, and, and, and I mean, seeing you on so many different platforms, the Hollywood beat down, and this, these all these different things. You know, sometimes people forget you really are from St. Louis, yeah. born and raised, right? A lot of people forget that, especially when. You get in guys like Conor McGregor face, he forgot that and I had to remind him. Uh -huh. <laughs> because sometimes you, you forget that 
what God has changed me to and what he's brought me out of don't mean that I don't remember it. Don't mean that I couldn't go back to it if I needed to. So I try to make sure when I'm on TMZ, that's my TMZ hat. I can kind of say whatever I want to. I can drop a bomb in there. When I'm on Fox, it's a Fox filter. When I'm fighting, it's a Beast Mode filter. So everything I do, I really separate myself. So um, me as an actor, me as a stuntman, it's going to be different than me as a rapper or me as an entertainer or me as a father. So as long as I can do that and I can sprint every lane, I don't see why I would allow somebody to box me in and tell me what I can't do and tell me, you know, just stick to this. You know, they've always tried to do that my whole life and I've proved everybody right wrong. Absolutely. How did all these opportunities really come come forth, man? You know, my mom told me a long time ago, all I can do is say you know. And really, you can take that from trying to go and get a girl phone number at the skating ring or asking the sponsor to endorse you or to go in and audition for a movie. And I've always had that mindset, all you can do is help me know. And you'd be surprised on how many times just having that attitude, opportunities are created. And then once you get in there, it's just pure work ethic, doing your thing, keeping your nose down, not acting like you're larger than life, um, being on time, doing a good job, those people want to hire you again. And every time I'm on a movie set or if I'm you know, around artists or something, I'm always networking. I'm never going to be afraid to put my phone, let's connect with Let's hook up and just create a crazy network that's really allowed me to do some really cool things. Interestingly enough, I, I, I discovered you were in the midst of getting your master's yeah. when you pursued the MMA full time. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, my whole life, I've always been told scholar athlete, school first, then athletics. You can't compete, you can't go to college unless you have proper grades and all that stuff. So I was training in MMA after college. I was coaching, I was trying to make an Olympic team in wrestling. You know, I think I was in the top seven in the world in, in wrestling at one point. Um, so I, I was hopeful to make a, a world team or Olympic team. And I just didn't, I never, I never cracked through. I never bust through at, a, at, a, at that art. And um, I began to figure out what the heck am I gonna do? And I was coaching wrestling at the time. And when you coach wrestling, you got a chance to be a graduate assistant, so they pay for your school. I didn't want to go back to school. I was like, I graduate, that's all I need, forget that crap. So I started training in the May. And the time when the remember when gas prices hit three dollars for that first time? Nobody was ready for that. And I was traveling to Southern Illinois, St. Charles, Olivet, like a dodgeball. And my bank account got so dry. I'm talking about $25,000 of credit card debt. Um, sleeping on my mom's couch in the kitchen, you know. And at a point in time, I'm like, man, I don't feel like I'm a man. I had to tell my coach, I said, I got to get this up. I can't train them. I can't even afford the gas money to get to you. I can't make it to work on time, get my kids there. And he told me just tough love. He said, well, shit, you need to go to graduate school, take out a student loan. So I went to graduate school, took out a student loan to fund my MMA training. And I got halfway through the master's degree and I recognized that I needed to give everything to the sport of MMA. So I took a jump, leap of faith, and I did it. And now we got gold around our waist. <laughs> yeah, you came in with the belt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, interestingly enough too, I saw you, you know, you recently purchased a home for your mother as well. Yeah. How was that, man? What was that experience like for you? You know, I told my mom when I was 10 years old, I had this bright idea that, you know, I said, I gotta find a way to get out of here. You know what I mean? I said, this dude's gonna go to jail, this dude's probably gonna get shot and killed. If I'm here, I'm gonna be in one of these things. I gotta find a way to get out. And I'm like, what can I control? And the 10 year old kid, I don't know what made me think this way, had him in God. And I was like, hmm, I can control what I do in the classroom. I can control how hard I, you know, put down for athletics. If I got good grades, now I'm a good athlete. Maybe I can go to college, because we there's 13 of us in this house, we can't afford it. Maybe I can go to college on a scholarship. And I'm like, if I go to college on a scholarship, then maybe I'll make it to the NFL. So I told my mom, I'm gonna make it to the NFL, I'm gonna buy you a house. And I promised her that at 10 years old. And 26 years later, it wasn't the NFL, you know, but I was able to, you know, cash in on that promise, you know, buy her a house. You know, she was living in East St. Louis where she wanted to live, you know, went to church there. And it's something about when you live in the hood, it's a lot of security if you know you know how to maneuver there. Like some people are terrified of it, but if you know about it, it's actually a lot of they will look out for your place and protect you and look out for you. So she was living in Washington Park, right in East St. Louis in the, in the hood. And I was like, my 
might gotta get you out of there. So last year I bought a house and uh, one of the one of the dopest things I've ever done. You know, it's extremely rewarding. You know, she sacrificed everything for me. Three jobs. You know, anything you can think of. She's only missed one wrestling match ever. That's because it was in Russia. And she missed one fight ever because I couldn't afford to fly her in San, um, San Jose. And she's never missed anything. So she's been extremely clutch, extremely supportive. So to do that, man, it was like like a lifetime achievement. You know? So yeah, and, 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 you're a very savvy businessman, um, and, and you've really brought some things together. Wiz seems to be a very dedicated MMA fan, and uh, obviously he's training. So what was his initial response when you sent him over the record? You know, Wiz, um, I got Wiz trained at this gym called Break with my homie Jay Glazer. Um, it's on Fox Sports Network. He owns a gym, so Wiz starts training there, Ludacris starts training there, Snoop starts training there. And How'd you get Snoop in there, though? I mean, come on. It's was, it was a domino effect. Okay. You know, you start seeing um, all these different people enjoying martial arts and they're all in the industry, and everybody wants to learn how to hit something. You, know, you think you know, but when you get in there, you get tired, it makes you want to come back. And I think, like I said before, People that have done great things in anything have that, that competitive mind and they all chasing greatness. So when they get into sports, like snooping there all the time, early in the morning, faithfully, <laughs> with a quarter sleeve dry fish shirt on. <laughs> Every single time. Yeah. And Wiz, Wiz can't go, he can't, he can't even go a day without traveling. It don't matter if they're on the road. You'll see them pull a tour bus over there, set up circuits, doing burpees. And when they announced his fight, they was like, we all been champ camp. So the whole Taylor Gang squad, you look at all the Instagrams, they all are lifting weights, shadow boxing. They, um, my homie is um, doing it Ernie Reds. Remember um, Ninja Turtles? Yeah. The little, the little Asian guy that's, amazing, okay. that's my homie. So wow. He's older now, obviously. <laughs> but he was on that, he was in um, The Last Dragon, yeah. remember that, that scene yeah. that was going crazy? Absolutely. He was a young one. So he, he goes on a roll with them now. So when they go on tour, he goes on a roll, whole pass with them. But it becomes, like martial art is a lifestyle. It's a discipline, it's, it's a fraternity when you start doing it. So when this song came out, everybody knew that he had put on like 15, 20 pounds, started getting cut up, and he was training in martial arts. I'm like, what better person to put on the track? Like, you know, obviously, you know, you showing everybody you can beat some ass, let's do it. So it was, it was a natural fit, it was perfect timing. Um, so what, what's next for you, man? I mean, you're really taking you know your music career seriously, obviously, and it seems like MMA and hip hop is starting to you know I would say cross the lines. Yeah. And, and it's probably infused a lot more you know of a healthier consciousness in, in, in hip hop as a whole. Um, what do you want to do with this next? You know, um, anything that I do, I try to be the best in. You know, I never want to be the weakest link. And nobody remembers second place, and I just. I found a balance, it ain't perfect, but I found a balance where I know fighting is my number one deal. So, I mean, Doug will tell you that it's been so many times I want to be in the studio during training camp, but I had to shut it off. Even if it was just an hour or two, it probably wouldn't hurt me, but mentally the discipline of not doing it, not eating the damn brownie I wanted, not, you know, taking this movie part, even if it was just a one day commercial. As long as I can do that mentally, I know that I'm dedicating myself to my craft and everything happens in chapters. If I look so far ahead as my acting and my music and all this stuff, and I make that the primary, then I won't achieve the you know the greatness and the legacy I set out for in mixed martial arts. So I can do both. I've been planting seeds, whether it's comedic, doing comedy, doing acting, doing stunt work, doing uh, broadcast, doing music, so that when I exit this mixed martial arts journey, I'm already ready to roll into something else. But my music is different. You know, um, movies take a long time. Uh, I'm filming the movie Sunday. It's gonna take you know a week or two. What's the movie? Uh, it's a movie called In Battle. The, the director of the movie Blow. He did SWAT, American History X. Um, this is a, a mixed martial arts inspired movie. And I told him I didn't want to do MMA in the movie, so they have me do something different. I'm trying to you know increase my acting chops. I want to do more acting, less stunt work, less MMA stuff. Cause I can do that stuff in my sleep. So this is a role where you know um, I'm alongside a mixed martial art, but I'm not one of the fighters. Anymore. So music to me is kind of a vet. It's kind of an outlet. You know what I mean? Like I'll go home with my kids down to go to sleep. Hey, you wanna go to the studio? We might get there at 11, 12, 1 a.m. We might talk for an hour before we even start recording. We might leave at five in the morning. 
but the energy in her, the vibe in her, and the sound in her, and creating art, you know, it has a way to give you energy. Like, we went to sleep at 5 a.m. I had to get up at 6 a.m., take the kids to school, do all this stuff, but, you know, I'll never exchange it because it's just something about those moments in which you produce in her. Like, the thing about, like, like, some guys are good at freestyle, some guys are good at battle rap, like my guys at b up, all that. But on wax, you only got to do it once. So coming up with the concept, and coming up with the music, and writing it, and really making it authentic, you got to do it once. Then you got to remember it, now it's a track. So that's what I thrive mostly in. I can come up with the concept, you know, I might not see her in battle me, you know what I mean, but guys might not see her in battle me in the <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What are you trained to? Like, what's on your Apple playlist? You, you know? um, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Like, this, this last camp, you know, I was just listening to music that I was really passionate about that really meant something to me, especially with abbreviated camp. It was a short camp, and I have a lot of time to get ready. You know, to be actually, you know, my brother had some crazy tracks, some crazy music. Some of it's not even released yet. But I was listening to some of these songs because at the time I was listening to it for the lyrical content, the beat, the vibe, the style, and it was dope. But then when it was time to train, I needed to something to go a little deeper. I started hearing it for what it meant to me in my life and like, you know, the personal things you go through and, you know, everybody rooting the kitchen. They want to see you lose and they want to see you fall. You know, it, it was a verse in there. It was like, you know, adversity makes champions. You get knocked down, you get back up. I'm feeling this, my, I'm feeling this, my rain has just begun. It said, when it's dark, you know the light coming. My sense is tingling. Probably mean the fight coming, but I'm ready for it. That, sh that just had my skin standing up, you know, hair on the back of my neck. And they just put me in that mold where I can, I'll probably can run through a wall. And I was just drawn from music like that. Um, came fight week. I was checking out um, Kamikaze. Um, what do you think? Yeah, he, he went ham on um, Lucky You and definitely um, not a light. But the, the real, it wasn't to me, I expect Eminem, you know, he, he's always had that gift, but it was just like he was disrespected. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to show people, he wanted to remind them. So what they were rapping about made me feel I was in that same mode. And then it was a, um, there was a gospel track. My sister told me to listen to this, meditate on this, and I didn't until the day before the fight. And then I couldn't turn it off. It was just basically saying, God, you go out here and you fight this battle. You know, you undefeated. You go out there, I'm going to be a willing vessel. Use me tonight and just be willing. Sometimes it's not our fight. You just got to be willing to be used. And you know, I went out there. I said, "All right, I don't know what's gonna happen tonight, but I'm willing. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna relax, and I'm just gonna enjoy the moment." Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting back to fighting real quick, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on, uh, you know, McGregor and yeah. Floyd Mayweather. Obviously, the sport has just exploded and provides a lot of other opportunities, including what you're doing with music, but. What are your thoughts about where it's going? And, you know, are you gonna get in there with Conor? You know, Conor really don't want to smoke with me. Like, he has many, many opportunities to fight me. And um, some guys in our sports talk about they'll fight anybody anytime until they come to me. Um, when it comes down to offering me fights, I've never told the UFC no, unless I had a real good reason. So uh, Conor is a brilliant businessman. We can't even we can't even act like he's not. He knows how to do it. He does his research. He did a press conference yesterday. He was digging below the belt, finding research on his opponent because to him, it's a complete art. The press conference, the talk, and the face down, the stare down, the mind games. And then he actually, you know, one of the few guys that actually goes and can deliver what he says. Um, Floyd, Floyd's just as good of a businessman, you know. So he knew that the opportunity to bring both worlds to something that had never been done would always get him that back he was looking for, you know, making a fortune on fighting. And the thing about the thing I like about Floyd and Snoop, Wiz, and guys like that, they recognize, they recognize. I see this kid trying. I see he has a star power. He's doing it all by himself. I have the power to help him out, to pull him up a little bit, to give him a boost. And there's no ego involved, and there's no insecurity involved, because there's enough odds for all of us to eat. So guys like Floyd, and guys like Snoop, and guys like Wiz have stepped up and helped the brother out. And Know, giving me access to their money, which is you know kind of respectable. Very dope. As a as a scholar athlete, you know, just from a political standpoint, what do you think about what's going on across the country with the NFL, the president? What do you feel about that? You know, I think um, <clears throat> I think when you're exercising your right, you know, your first amendment right, I think um, you should really go back to the reason why. You know, and obviously being from Ferguson is a, a very sensitive issue for me because. 
this is not the first time, you know, these things have happened. This is the first time that it's been spoken about. You know, I've been harassed. I've been seen my friends pulled over. I see my friends slapped for no reason, put in the wagon, beat up. You know, one time I remember being on a uh, floor sent, and a uh, police officer put like, um, um, you know, the old news, the old phone books. Yeah. Put phone books in the shirt and beat beat one of my friends up so he wouldn't bruise. And we gonna say, okay, they put a phone book. Know, and, and it wasn't just black, it wasn't just white, it was just in general with the mindset. But it also branched from sometimes the youth not respecting authority and always contesting and always challenging. And it's just an issue that is, is, is married on both sides. If you got 20 kids that have been disrespecting you, not been compliant, and you get the one kid that's looking and dressing like the same kid, can you just really imagine that the person would think that this kid's gonna do the same thing? And, Vice versa, you get pulled over, you was going 30 miles an hour. I'm like, how was I going 30 miles an hour? I'm in a 1972 Cutlass. I just made a right, you pulled right behind me. How can I even get to that? So I see both sides of it, but I wanted Ferguson to be seen for what it is. You know, yeah, it was some parts of Ferguson are rough, some parts of Ferguson are beautiful. But the people that I know from Ferguson that made it, it built us, it made us different, it made us appreciate life, the quality of life. We might not have had a lot, but we had support. I think about my friends that, you know, Grammy, the Harold family, some of the best musicians in the entire world. You know, saxophone players, trumpet players. You know, my buddy, you know, Lawrence Lanos, the double engineer. You know, this dude is a diagnostic system for the missiles that have been launched. They all from Ferguson. You know, myself, college graduate, All-American wrestler, world champion fighter. Now I'm doing all types of entertainment. Be a complete artist. So that's what I want Ferguson to be seen as. When, when Kaepernick's at that knee, a lot of people don't talk about a guy named Nick Warrior is a buddy of mine. Nick Warrior played for the Seahawks. We also do a program together called Emerging Veterans and Players, people that have a hard time adjusting after the sport. So I know him very well. He went to go talk to Kaepernick and he told him, instead of sitting down, take a knee. He said, we take a knee and we honor the fallen soldiers. That's what we do. He said, I won't take a knee with you because what I do is I put my head on my chest and I stand up. That's my thing, but I'll stand up alongside of you. No one talks about that. No one talks about the issue and the reason why he took the knee. I think if the attention was placed on that and not so much, okay, he's disrespecting the national anthem, he's disrespecting all the fallen soldiers, that was never the intent. The intent was justice for all, treat everybody, the whole human race the same, and that was lost in the shuffle. Well, um, we appreciate you, T. Well, appreciate you. I know you, um, I mean, we got, we want, first and foremost, you to know that you're from St. Louis. We support you. We want to create a platform and make sure we continue to build. Proud of all the wonderful things you've been doing. You certainly, you know, shine a different light on the city. And, you know, you've been representing strong. Congratulations. I know Thank last you. week, man, you did your thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got I can't done. come out with a song called I Beat Your Ass. <laughs> I beat your ass we did it before. That was in the back of my head. <laughs> right, man. But, um, you know, we want to take you in the studio real quick, you know, and, uh, you know, get you on live real quick. But, um, Thank you for joining us behind the beat. You got any other words for St. Louis? Hey, make sure you download the record. I'll be sure as iTunes, Spotify. Also, you know, just support St. Louis. Sometimes St. Louis, we, we pick it up last minute. So let's support each other no matter what it is. Beauty, yeah. art, sports, you know, and then we we'll just have a tomorrow. What's the next fight? Next fight for me, you know, it's, it, I got a little November surgery. 3rd? November 3rd was a target today. And um, I got my MRI report back and my doctor thinks I need to have a small surgery. So. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do November third. Even though I wanted to turn down Madison <laughs> Square Garden one more time, yeah, you know, never. I'm gonna hold off until the end of the year and get in next year. Okay. All right, man. Tell them to follow you as well, bro. Guys, follow me. T W O O O D L E Y. It's three O's in there because T really won't come off the handle. So T W O O O D L E Y on all social media platforms. There it is. Tyron Woodley. Hi, the beat. Let's get it.